I've uh, found myself listening to more and more stuff about crypto and NFTs. Uh, Coffeezilla. Oh, it's a, he's someone to admire him. I had to listen to him uh, give an interview to that Lex Friedman guy. I'm up and down on him, but he, he gives people a chance to speak, doesn't he? So he's all right. Um, and he was like, um, he first learned about like a pyramid selling scam when he was at university and the Amway guys tried to sell him into one of these, you know, sales. Basically, you have to sign up all the people you know and then they sign up all the people they know and then they sign up all the people they know and it's a big smiley face pyramid scheme. Those who buy into it, who like put their own time and energy into it, they they start to resell it. And he saw it and he, he, he's, he came up with what they call a valid objection. Now, I was taught about pyramid schemes when I was being trained as a salesman. And it'd be a matter of um, when you receive a valid objection, you let it go. That's no longer a sales lead. You get to talking to someone about the thing you're trying to sell and if they give you a valid objection, I hear very good reason why they're not going to be making a purchase today. You're to leave, you're to leave them alone. And that'd be like, that'd be almost the mark of a pyramid scheme as to where when somebody starts asking questions, it's like, no, no, fuck off. Not you. No, 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 not you. You're no good. Get away, get away, get away. Can't handle I can't handle an objection to the basic premise of what they're trying to sell. So it's like once upon a time, like almost it's like one in ten people would fall for something like that that was too good to be true. Whereas you know, um, Co uh, Coffeezilla's objection was, hang on a minute, I'm at an Amway sales presentation on a fucking Saturday night it's like this guy's working selling me it's like he hasn't got financial freedom if he's working on a Saturday night has he looks more like he's working every hour God sends to con people into selling on this crap he picked up on it right away that that guy was not making money So I've been watching and it's like, there's things I notice and it's because it's been thrown in my face. It's not that I've gone looking for it. It's that every other time I get an advert on YouTube, it's some guy trying to recommend to me in an advert, which I mostly flick through, but then stop to watch, telling me about the new career I could have as a um, crypto trader. about that so it's like I'm watching videos that are pointing to crypto scams and I'm like well it's just a pull the rug scam it's like um, you see a lot of this it's like there was a time in my life when I thought that everything was a scam pretty much uh, you told me what it was and I could tell you why it's a scam it was one of them as to where I'm, I'm, I'm very, very wise to how something could potentially be. So like that thing I was looking at with the knives that people sell, the Kamakoto or Kakako Mo, and it's like, no, it's like <clears throat> a product like knives, you don't buy over the internet. You know, to pull off that scam of them cheap knives saying that they, and they're always on sale, get a 50% discount if you use this code. It's like, tell you what, when you're making 5,000% profit, you can afford to pay out some really good, uh, really, really good commission to people who bring you sales. So it's like, I see them Kamikamoko sort of blade adverts on people's videos now, and I'm like, how much are they paying you for that? So did you not think for a minute that they're paying you far too much to do this? 
This is too good to be true, this sponsorship money you're getting. From them and the, the same firm who do their other scam with that, uh, where you can buy a, t buy a large ship. Which is a joke scam because, but say, I know it's a joke scam. Why? I know somebody bought a large ship and they paid a lot more than $50 for it. I know somebody bought one. <laughs> I know a lord. It's like, how do you end up a lord? He says he bought it and he bought it for a lot of money. And it's like, in no way in this world could you, it's just, in essence, a funny email to send someone that costs 50 quid. It's, yeah, so when people are selling that, it's like trying to sell it as a tongue-in-cheek gift. But if people are, you know, thinking for a minute that it's got anything tangible attached to it, well, it hasn't. It's just rhetoric. It's just bullshit. It's a joke. But it isn't sold as one, not by everyone. Funny old thing, that one. But it's like, if you're going to sell something spurious on the internet knives is a fucking good one that's a good one they're, they're a product that you should never be going <coughs> <coughs> you should never be buying mail order because the quality of stuff you can get for nothing it's like someone stole my knife right and i know who did it and it's like the guy who stole my knife me um, kitchen knife right he knew what he was doing it's like why it's like well it was a surgical steel blade like 1065 Sheffield steel it keep its edge for fucking ever and its strength for the width of it astounding it's like if you made it, it's like um Push comes to shove in almost any situation if you needed a, a blade that would cut that fucking cut. We'd be like cut branches off trees with it and things like that. It's like that's a knife. And when they say like Japanese steel, it's like I mean like dats and cars back in the seventies, just rust buckets or Japanese steel. So you start weighing up, it's like it's rhetoric this, and then it's like that shadow versity had a look at it. About six months since, but no one's paid attention to it as to say, um, these knives are as good as one given for free at the pound shop if you spent more than five pound. Or it was given away free at Aldi or Lidl if you spent over a certain amount, a, cut, a kitchen cutting knife, and it was of the same quality. Made of the same steel as these ones that these YouTubers are selling us. Japanese steel. It's like, no, it's like, it's rhetoric. It's like, if it was good steel, it'd be from fucking Sheffield. It'd be what they call 1065 surgical steel. Now go and look that up. Surgical steel knives. And you can find out what a good knife is and why. But it's like Japanese, it's like they're harking back to Kill Bill. Harking back to Kill Bill as to say, thousand times folded, it's like Highlander bullshit. Japanese steel, my ass. It's like, you, this scams, it's like, okay, so all these YouTubers, a lot of them that I sort of follow, have all, follow, all fallen for these scams. Scam firm says, we want to sponsor your channel. And all they know is, right, all they're working on is that these influencers, people with influence need money. And we can get them to, basically, they need money so much, we can trick the YouTuber into selling anything we want them to. So you've got it where they've been scamming. They've been used as shells. So they'll be making a video, I don't know, talking about, you know, left-wing shells. And they'll insert an advert in there, shilling for a company that's looking to rip you off with a poor Chinese-made merchandise out of an office in Hong Kong. Even Ben Shapiro was selling them shit knives.
So it's like there's marketplaces in the world that these scammer types have got 100% truly worked out. It's like we've got an excess of sales talent. We just need product. We've got persuasive people. Because I wish Scott Adams would get in on this. As he talked about NFTs, I don't know if he's in on it or not because he's, he's a bit weird about crypto. He's like in on it and is made out of it so it kind of suits him to hold with it. Although I, I don't know if he's updated his opinions on it. Because there's a thing that runs right through it all, and it's that fucking Bitcoin. Especially, you know, over the years in my... Uh, of, I have a lot of time on my hands to keep up to date with all kinds of things going on. I think I've lost count at the number of times some influencer in the things that I view has tried to turn me on to Bitcoin. And then others who've... Um, Bitcoin's almost like, you know, when... I'm quite a, uh, what's the word, well, to use the the good word that he uses, Scott Adams, I'm quite persuasive. So if I was to be able to be turned into either a sort of right-wing Jew hater, I'd become very persuasive at that if I was to believe it. Don't, can't be, can't buy into a scam like that. Same for Bitcoin. If I had at any stage taken up on the uptake of Bitcoin, then it'd be a matter of, oh, He's got himself a new house. He's made a butty on this. And it's like, there's there's a community of that, that because it is, a in essence, a, a, an emotional investment as well as a financial one, will reward you in Bitcoin for talking up Bitcoin. So there's a great big Bitcoin community and club and cult where they pretty much stifle dissent of glorious Bitcoin like it's, a deity. And it's like unscrupulous crypto. It's, it's a big joke, isn't it? And it's like, ha, ha, ha. Who falls for that? It's like, oh, someone out there does. It's like, where are you finding all your extra customers? Why, now I've joined the old Twitter, why do every day of the week I get someone in my inbox saying, you've been specially selected. See, there's all kinds of scams. It's like getting someone to accept a gift. That's the thing, you see them you know, links people leave, say, hit this link and you can win a prize and they like to telegram groups or something. They are people who are in the Bitcoin or crypto bubble who are desperately trying to find new people. There was a, and I said the advert earlier on, I saw it was like, really, it was like, you only need to be able to pay, pass the most basic credit check for some trading house somewhere to give you a trading account of £2,500. So it's like opening a line of credit. And then he starts with people with no experience of sales at all. I've been, and he it, and it, it starts to ring up all these figures of how much money people have made. And he'd be like, are you for real? It's like, so your job come, become, right? Mithering people on the fucking internet, like me, right? To buy your bullshit cryptocurrency because you're sold on it. But this, where well, these scammers are trying to get people to their exchange to get them into debt. Oh, started, you can open a trading account and you, it's like free money. It's like, is it? It's like, I, I didn't, I, 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 I've, I've spent most of my time just dismissing it as a scam and I haven't looked at the conditions as to worth the conditions that would make it so bullshit like that. Things that are too good to be true can thrive. 
And to start to think about it, it makes me so sad. It's like people must be fucking desperate. And you know that, it's got me thinking as well about that Andrew Tate. You know, to join his Hustlers University. Where he basically teaches you how to be a drop shipper. How fucking desperate must you be? Shows you bling and then shows you where you can eke out an existence by pretty much being someone who... Uh, sometimes it, it, it can reduce you to someone who uh, parcels things up and takes them to the post office. Or become a remote agent for some company needing someone to manage a... a a small shop on Amazon or something like that where there may be a language barrier but then you're not really knowing what product you're selling and it'd be oh it's sold so it's like you're shilling so it's teaching people how to shill and work remotely and it's called like the Hustlers Academy and it's like how desperate must people you know, people, mostly guys, how desperate must this guys, the, those guys be to be pay money for that? It's like, how many people you got paying that 50 a month to be in your cult? It's like, they must be <clears throat> the biggest fucking set of fucking barn pot lost fools who walked the earth. Who are likely now like working, actually working for uh, amounts of money that's just really not worth getting out of like bed for and very busy trying to drum up scam business for other scammers. I say I had a time me where I started thinking that everything were a scam because everyone who I was surrounded with was a fucking scammer who was willing to tell any lie to get what they wanted. We surrounded with them. And it's like, I don't like this. Rubs off poorly on me. It's the easiest thing in the world to just blag someone into buying whatever you've got. It's a doddle. It's a bit of enthusiasm. Lay the blag on thick. Uh, and, and now I've started having, you know, been having a, a bit of a, a, an afternoon of watching like Coffeezilla <laughs> and learning about FTX. I'm like, I've run away from it. I thought I escaped from being surrounded by fucking sharks and snakes. And it's like it's caught up with me feels really fucking weird it's like you know maybe you were ahead of the game 20 years ago when you're thinking everyone's a fucking con man everything's a scam nothing's as advertised everything's a fucking letdown everything's hype It's gone steps beyond that now, hasn't it? As to where you've made people so soft-headed and gullible that they just end up just all having to always learn the hard way. It's super fucking ripped off. And it's like, you, you get it where uh, one day you'll get it where uh, you, the guys who have been selling the swords and the fake titles will be selling some game. Red Shadow Legends or something like that and it'll be a matter of right this game's designed designed to be easy and colourful and playful and in essence you get paid in the game in gold or credits or something like that. And it's um it's it's designed to get you hooked to it quickly and then start paying money to be able to compete with the guys who've paid money. So it becomes like, you can get it where you're playing a free game, but suddenly it's a really expensive thing. 
So now you've got hundreds and hundreds of pounds worth of real life money invested in fake shit in a game. Everyone hates that, but it's like these guys, YouTubers, they don't think twice about taking the money off these guys who are selling these scam games. Pay to compete. Pay to win. They don't care. So I see it sometimes where <clears throat> guys are in on this who've got used to this fucking money from these sponsors. They'll put videos up that are absolute fucking pointless things as to where they'll find reasons to make a video. They will find reasons to, and you'll put it up and you're like, ah, this is half-assed work, right? So you're just a show for these guys now. It's like you're probably breaking your ass editing this for them to put out something substandard and fucking, you know, so thin. It's, to, it's just half assed shit. You just need something. And it'd be a matter of, you know, these guys who uh, became YouTubers hoping to have some kind of uh, freedom end up working slaves for fucking twats who are trying to sell spurious gear to unsuspecting followers. It's like, the, the problem is, it's like none of the funding models work for this sort of stuff. None of them. None of them are satisfactory. None of them work. They don't, no one's come up with a way of making it work well. So you just sort of wide open to being, in essence, bought. You're almost for sale. The sort of person who, who looks at people like that and thinks, I could buy that guy getting whistling my tune. People who think like that, they see talent like that. We're in a world full of that. They do quite well, and it's like, Oh, talent, you work, You can work for me. Might want to be a friend. Oh, I've got a business proposition for you. Might fancy it. Or next thing you know, you've got the, you know, the biggest sponsor. No, it's like, you, you're not safe. You're looking to... Um. So I see it as to where the guys who've like turned Bitcoin and crypto rug pulling scammers, who've been like YouTubers and then in essence screwed their audience out of money. None of them ever go to prison for it, do they ever? Just, just the rug pole, just... It's like, um, <clears throat> you can get paid for an idea, can't you? We well, used to come up for it, and I come up with a good idea for a book, say. I'm writing a novel. Get it on that Kickstarter. Give a write whatever you're going to write as to how to sell it, whether you do a an outline or a chapter that's... Um, you know, first chapter, to, and people say, hey, this looks like it could be a good book. How much money do you need to knock it out, John? Well, £10,000 should be enough, and then just take the money. Don't do it. What happens to people who do that? Nothing. I'm like, when that Kickstarter come out and stuff like Patreon, I'm like, these are brilliant money laundering sites. Fantastic. It's like you've, you've created a, a service economy here that could be a cover for any kind of service or even goods. It's like, what have you sussed out here? It's like, what are, we, what are people paying for? And then it, it finds its natural home on, on something like OnlyFans, where it's just honest about what it's about. And it's like, their models for getting paid work, don't they? Fucking hell. But it's like, 
how many people who are operating or have built themselves an audience up or an influence up on this platform who are one way or another shilling, shilling long term, having pushed the Bitcoin from the start and keep rah, 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 or never negatively cover the Bitcoin Brotherhood or else crypto. Don't talk about it. So it's like there's a world of shills. There's a world of shills frightened, I think, of, of just having a proper conversation about them NFTs and crypto. I spent too much, I've come to realise it last day, I've spent too much time dismissing that as a scam and not enough time keeping an eye on it. Because that is the most base fucking trick. Powerful though. Just to pull the rug. Pump and dump. Puts the thing together for me that up here. People are always telling me when I'm in my early to mid 20s, they were saying, John, there's no limit to the amount of money you can make as a salesman. No limit. What do you want to sell? Just go and grab all of it with both hands and just sell it. It's like. And then it's like, then opportunities arise where people will come along with a spurious product and they'll try and sign you up and it's a matter of, this is a con. This is a, you have to talk someone into buying this. You have to educate them in what it is before they'll, they'd even ever be interested in buying it and you want me to be like an expert fear monger in order to sell this product. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. It's lying. So like, I'm not with it at all. I think your product's a scam. I think your company's a fraud. I think the service you provide is spurious. It's like without the fear mongering and the lies, there's no need for it. It's like you want me to go out and con people and rain make, understanding that if you can sell them the bullshit notion of what you're trying to sell, they can sell it onto their bosses. Fucking pyramid scheme, but it works outwards. You want me to fucking scare some guy to death in order for him to go to his boss and say, we need to buy this service. No. No. Now, if the answer would have been yes, if you want to be a cunt all day, and be, when you when you, when you rip someone off, be like, ah, fucking come on, I'm getting paid. And you'll find that in businesses like that, the rates of commission are always really generous. The bonuses often include like shares in the company. There's fucking money everywhere. And that's because you're selling fresh air. You're selling no service, nothing. You're selling peace of mind. Something, a ridiculous notion of insurance that's not required or some internet security thing back before people really understood what that was. So it'd be like tech boom, right? Where I fucked up, I was, I'm, I'm of the generation and of personnel who in normal circumstances would have expected to have made a fortune having been able to ride the wave of the whole fucking thing. The mistake I made is I went from selling Cisco to selling scams. Professionally. You're happy doing what you're doing and then people come along and make offers and say, well, you've got good salesmen, sales skills. They understand that, that they are transferable. We'd like you to sell our product for us. And the difference between our product and, you, and the product you're used to selling is that we are pressure sellers. We think you can play the hard game. 
do you now? <clears throat> so it's like that. It's like I've been in that position as to where it's like this is a scam, but I'm invested in it because I need to pay my mortgage. And what it feels like ran like hell from it, and I've now having <laughs> having been catching up with the uh, the news about crypto and NFTs and certainly that FTX thing. It's like, what a measure of the mental health of the world that guy is. It's like he's been able to pull off a scam worthy of fucking sour on. I think that's probably where he nicked it from. It's like he he, he gave every he bribed everyone he needed to. Gave every, everybody a ring of power, didn't he? And then no one who matters is in a position to say anything bad about him because he's got the receipts because he's paid everyone. And it's like you find out this guy is waxed off his fucking head every minute of every day on prescription drugs, the real good stuff. Has been the only way he can keep it together. And it's like the guy can barely speak for himself. It's like he's like a young Joe Biden. And at the minute he's playing dumb and seeking sympathy from the media in the US and the media in the US are doing their part because he paid them so much money. And it's astonishing. So also, and this is the thing as to why it's worth them trying to frame it as something different. What the fuck has happened to this world when that guy has been given the opportunity to steal six million dollars? Any, by any means at all. Or uh, be trusted with that amount of money. What did he ever do to earn? And it's like nothing. He just paid all the right people to say good things about him. It's like they were a, a machine for looting other people's crypto as well. Systematically pumping and dumping everyone else's. They'd buy it up and then drop it. Systematically, it was part of how they were making money. It's like, oh, so you're destroying everyone else's bum cryptocurrency at the same time as peddling your own bum cryptocurrency. It's like, you wicked fucking evil people. Like, you, you don't think for a second that they're, they're uh, disappointed that but they're, 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 try, they're fixing to try to, because this is, you know, it's like they're in hyper fucking wonderland now, uh, offering fantasy land full of drugs, not been arrested, trying to now come up with some master plan or scheme or excuse to shift the blame likely onto uh, the way it will end is that they'll shift the blame onto the investors being foolish and having lost their money. It's the investor's fault they trusted me. I'm not really worth trusting. Will be the final refuge as to where the rhetoric will end. Because that's the only way of telling the story and not being to blame. And then when that moment comes, it's like, oh. You know, narcissist baby always runs back to mama always comes back to everyone's a liable me and he'd be like you've let a cretin like that get to the very top of business and have it so he can pay you with stolen money to say what a great guy he is it's like it's one of the most evil schemes ever concocted it's like that guy is a super villain retard like he doesn't give a fuck about the people he's ripped off He's now concerned about what others might think about him. He's a psychopath. And not a particularly well put together one. In fact, a psychopath that if he wasn't rich, if you took him the way he looks and behaves and put him into a working class environment, he would instantly get recognised as being a psychopath. 
instantly recognised as being a psychopath. Why? Because the way he dresses, the way he carries himself, the way that he can't fucking talk, the way that he can't handle himself in any way, shape or form in public, the way that he's <clears throat> so, excuse me while we're talking, easily distracted, half arsed It's like, how was he able to convince anyone he was a serious person? Yeah, he did. I'm fucking astounded by that tale. The more I, the more I hear about it, I'm like, how did he get as far as this? It's like, what's your quality control like these days? It's like, well, it's non-existent and there's no penalties for people who run scams like that. I just learned that there's be a benefit to spamming someone's NFT wallet. Wouldn't cost you a lot of money. You could spam their wallet with anything you wanted and just put anything you wanted in somebody else's NFT wallet. Vandalise it. Use it to dox them. And because of the nature of the blockchain, it's there forever. <laughs> it's like, they've not really thought about that yet. They've not really thought about it, but it's like, those who are scamming off it, oh, they've thought of everything. It's like NFTs, it's like, um, I can usually, no matter what, when it's a derivative financial product, I can, you can tell me what it is and I can quite quickly discern what it's leveraged, what, what, what it's, where it's value lies. A derivative, whether it's been split like four and five times in the world, there's still a pile of bricks and mortar called the house that its value's offset against. I understand it. Can't get me a drowned in NFT. Just uh, the concept of it just gives me this headache that just the more I think about it, the worse the headache gets thinking about how an NFT has intrinsic value that would translate into pound notes. Can't work it out. And it appears I'm not the only one. And that's a scam like climate change is a scam and it's like when anyone comes up with a valid objection the cult that's making money off it uh, they all come at you and say you're too stupid to understand the technology like they say climate change well you don't you just don't follow the science do you same thing it's like if, if, you, if you're dealing with when you hit the wall of the cult they always come to you saying well you, you're not smart enough to understand this it's like well so, so explain it to me in a way where I can understand it, and they can't. They can't. <laughs> like, well, well, you, you, you. It's like that's like literal fresh air. That's like selling the emperor's new clothes, but selling them to everyone, and it being. Um, a poor use of the technology, a very poor use of the technology because the the image or whatever you put up there doesn't go up on there, just a link to it does. What? It's like, yeah, you've, you've, you've bought a hyperlink on a database. Do I own the artwork? No. Do I get its copyright? No. You get a link to it on a database and it's, I'm, at what stage is this worth any money? And it's like, well, no one knows, but they're paying. Like, has the world gone mad? And the answer is yes, it's done. Because these guys are all now ripping each other off, aren't they? They're all playing off amongst themselves. It's like, they'll eventually run out of customers, but it's like, how, how much have the dodgy practices allowed for like the banks themselves to exploit this situation because I, I dare say the people who've made the biggest killing on uh, Bitcoin were those big institutions when it was on the up when they all jumped on it and 
forced it up again and then sent it straight fucking crashing down not long after. <clears throat> it's like the institutions have made big on it. So it's like, call it a scam. It's like, oh, well, they bet against it. How much money in the world is tied up in assets that are meaningless? That don't don't actually um, don't mean anything or don't have a physical form even. Aren't offset against any value other than what someone who's now alive think it, thinks it might be worth. And that's just ridiculous. That's that's ridiculous. It's like if you just just send me your money it's like if you want to throw it away it's like send it to me who tell you a word of truth as opposed to put it in the pocket of a fucking scammer who's laughing his ass off at you believing in something that's just not real here i am baffled just stuck in that feeling as to where uh, is everything a scam was I right all along? And now I'm resting at no. Um, reality's catching up with you, John Boy. It's like things that I warn of, just everywhere, just like, and out of control. And it's like um, I have my own ways of measuring just how local things are but then I see a different aisle of it and then I start to get a measure of just how ruthless some people are now Care how much they're capable of I know what people are capable of but seeing it demonstrated in, in these such big terms as to where these guys are like ripping off thousands millions of people scalable untraceable with the nature of their old crypto and thinking they're clever wow that guy um who's claims to have accidentally thrown away a computer with a load of bitcoin on it right and it's been thrown in a landfill and he's trying to raise money and investors to help him reclaim his computer out of the landfill site um i think he's lying i think he's actually a scammer I think he's a, a, an after the fact, rather clever Bitcoin scammer who's trying to uh, earn by, you know, in essence, selling people on the notion of a treasure hunt. I don't think that's real. I think that's uh, bullshit. But there's a lot of things in the world that are bullshit, isn't there? Fucking throw it on the pile. 